Hey guys, welcome to Mr. Smith's Kitchen. Brian, Mr. Smith, Kitchen, as always. And uh, today, since you stopped by, I thought we would do a cookie, just like we did last week. Last week we did a cream cheese cookie, which was absolutely wonderful, and it did not last a day in our house. All two dozen, gone, no questions asked. Um, and don't tell anybody, but I ate my fair share of myself. But today, we're gonna do an Italian ricotta cookie. I know you're saying to yourself, ricotta in a cookie? Ricotta is actually used a lot in baking. Um, it, it, it's no different than say a sour cream or cream cheese um, or a yogurt. You know, it adds moisture, it adds tang, it adds flavor. Um, it does a lot, really. It, it, it really kind of works with it. So, the, somebody, I don't, I don't remember, I don't know who, uh, most of you is I did not read a history on this cookie, um, although I could, and if I do, maybe I should put it down in the description. Um, but it is an Italian cookie, and somebody thought of it, and it sounds good. It's, a, it's another one of those sweet and savory cookies. Um, it's very popular during the holidays. Um, at, not so much, I guess, in my house, only because I'd never heard of it before, but um, it is a holiday cookie. At, in Italy, it's a, it's an, uh, my understanding, it's a holiday cookie there, especially. So, why not try one, right? Um, that being said, if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if this is your first video, uh, I ask that maybe you check out some of my other videos. Why not? If you like this one, um, if you're returning or one of our new subscribers, thank you. Um, appreciate that. That is amazing. Um, that means our neighborhood is growing in leaps and bounds and it's doing that because people are liking, subscribing, and sharing. So let's keep that going. Also, get us out there in that algorithm and we can keep this neighborhood growing. Uh, comments, always welcome. Absolutely always welcome. The only thing I ask is be polite. Yeah, it's okay to disagree. Just think before you type as always. Um, I will give you all your measurements in tablespoons, cups, teaspoons, tablespoons. Also give them to you in grams. That way everybody can play along, um, no matter where you are, and if you're so inclined, right? Um, grams to me actually works better, even though I grew up with the standard system of cups, tablespoons, teaspoons. Um, grams is more precise, it's more consistent, and uh, I, I think it's overall, at least when it comes to baking, a better way to go. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get down to the counter and we're gonna get started on these cookies. All right, hold on for me just one second. Okay, we are down here at the counter. Um, things you will need, uh, a mixer of some sort, whether it be a uh, stand mixer, a hand mixer, a spoon, you will need something to mix with, a bowl. I'm using a paddle attachment. If you're using a stand mixer, if you're using a hand mixer, just use the attachments that come with it. And then you will need a second bowl for dry goods. All right, so, with this recipe, we are going to, this reminds me a lot of the cream cheese cookies we did last week, which like I said, can't iterate this enough, they were amazing. But these, uh, very similar to in makeup, only we're using ricotta instead of cream cheese, and this gets a lemon glaze icing uh, over top of it instead of powdered sugar, and then you can put sprinkles on it, uh, chocolate, whatever you like to put on top of cookies. Um, so anyhow. First thing we will need, and we're going to do is do our dry. So in this bowl, I have three and a half cups, or 495 grams of all-purpose flour. Now here's where I was talking last week about how the grams didn't exactly match up with the cups, and this is the recipe that I got the answer to that for. The reason being is when you normally measure out your cups, right? You take a spoon and you put put your your flour or whatever your flour in this way with a spoon into it and then you level it off. That gives you what would normally be 120 grams a cup. If you take your measuring cup and you scoop it in your flour or you know a product like that, um, it makes it packed down, which makes it way more, which means you're actually using more. And she explained that. I always wondered why, when I would read a recipe, that it would have a different gram amount than what the cups actually were. That's the reason why. So if you are doing um, 
grams. It's 495 grams, but it'll be only three and a half cups, and you're just going to use the cup and scoop it out. You're not going to fill it with a separate spoon. Um, and to this, we are going to add, I've got the recipe right here written down. Uh, if we like it, keep it. If we don't, throw it away. Um, to our flour, we are going to add two and a half teaspoons, 10 grams of baking powder. Go ahead and get that in there. And unlike last week, we're not going to sift anything, but we are going to whisk this for 20 seconds. Um, and then we're also going to add three quarters of a teaspoon, three grams of kosher salt. And just that. Now, if you don't have kosher salt, that's fine. You can use regular salt. Or if you're using salted butter in the recipe, because it does have butter, um, we you don't want to. Uh, we probably want to omit that salt. So you, you probably don't want salt at all in this. So now we're going to take our whisk and we're going to go ahead and whisk this together. And they recommended in the recipe that we whisk for 20 seconds. All right, we got this all good and whisked. 20 seconds, uh, like the recipe says. Now we just set that aside. So the next thing we need to do is with our stand mixer. We are going to take one cup, two sticks, 228 grams of unsalted butter, and I have it at room temperature. And we are going to put this in our stand mixer or a bowl for your hand mixer um, or a bowl for your spoon, um, if you're so inclined, which I'm here to tell you, that would be a lot of work. That's no lie. Um, <clears throat> and to this, we are going to add um, some sugar. We're going to add one and three quarter cup, 350 grams of just regular old granulated sugar. Now you may notice mine's not white, uh, a bright white, mine's more of a tan. And that's because I'm using a natural uh, cane sugar. It hasn't been processed. Um, it tastes the same. There's absolutely no different in it other than it just hasn't been as refined. Um, that means there's been a lot less damage done to it, so to speak, it's, it's more natural. And then the last thing I'm gonna add to this, I've got one teaspoon of lemon zest right there. And all I did was take a lemon, which I have running around here somewhere, and I used a microplane, you know, which is like a micro grater, and I took the yellow part off of it, just the yellow part, not the white underneath the yellow, just the yellow. The white is really bitter, and you'll know if you hit it. Um, but what this does, it adds a little sweetness and acidity to it. So we're gonna put that in there, and then we're gonna simply mix this on about a medium, medium high, until it is light and fluffy, like uh, mashed potatoes. All right, so we go ahead and get this, and it'll take a couple minutes maybe, depending on the softness of your butter. And uh, when I come back, we'll keep moving on. All right, so. We got that looking light and fluffy, and I know I do this for almost every video, but this may be your first video, so or baking video at any rate, so I'll show you what light and fluffy looks like. Uh, it looks like mashed potatoes, basically. That, that is what you're looking for, light and fluffy. It's, if your butter was uh, fairly yellow, it should no longer be yellow. Now, mine would be uh, more white, but my sugar is not white, so... Um, it's got probably an odd, well, I don't know how it looks to you, but it does have an off tint, kind of tan, light tan look to it. And that's just simply the color of the sugar. But it should have about the consistency of a mashed potato is what you're looking for. All right, so now we've got our uh, butter and sugar mixed together and um, light and fluffy, right? So the next thing we're gonna to add to this is one, uh, it's one tub, 15 ounces of ricotta cheese. I know, it looks like mashed potatoes, doesn't it? So we're gonna add that in there. Oop, maybe if I don't get it all over me first. I mean, really, right? So we'll get that in there. And we're also going to add two tablespoons, eight grams of uh, vanilla. Now this is a baker's vanilla. Uh, it differs from a standard vanilla, as in a baker's vanilla is actually designed to uh, withstand the heat. Sometimes vanilla, standard vanillas, will not take the, do well in the oven, and they, uh, uh, you'll lose the flavor. Uh, that 15 ounces of ricotta is 425 grams. I forgot to write it down on there, but it's on the container for the 15 ounces. So now we are going to take those two and we're going to mix those in 
till they're mostly combined. All right, so we are fairly well incorporated or combined. So to that, I have two large eggs, right? 100 grams, um, two large eggs. I'm gonna enter these in one at a time. And I didn't turn it off. I've got it on a low setting, right? I found that the lowest setting doesn't actually incorporate the egg. But you put them in one at a time, you wait until you see all the yellow disappear. You put in the other one, and then you wait till that disappears. And then I do believe, yep, um, that's all for the wet ingredients. The only thing we have left to do is add the dry ingredients. So what we'll need to do is, we'll go ahead and get this turned off real quick, give everything a quick scrape. Now, you may notice um, that your batter so far to this point looks curdled. Um, like right now, mine looks curdled. It's okay, that's a natural reaction between, oh, the egg and the butter, I believe. Um, I, I, it was I said to me once, I read it somewhere once, but I, I don't remember now if it's the egg and the butter I believe it's the egg and the butter, or it might be the ricotta and the butter, but um, I know it's okay. It's it's just the way it is. Once we put once we put the dry in there, which we're going to do next, um, that will smooth out, right? So we got that taken care of, like such, and now we can make we can put our dry ingredients in. I'll just I'll leave that off while we put the dry ingredients in there. And I'm just going to put it in all at once, right? The directions didn't say otherwise. The recipe didn't say otherwise. And it makes sense. And now, I will tell you this. Tell you this. When we start this up, when you start yours up, even if you're using a stand mixer, anything but a spoon, so to speak, you're going to want to start on low, on the lowest setting. If not, you are going to get a face full of powder. So I'm going to go ahead and get this mixed up till it's good and combined and a little smooth and uh, then I'll be back. All right, so we are well incorporated. Go ahead and get our spatula there. Get all that mix off of the handle attachment here right quick, or at least a fair amount of it. Wow, that makes a fair amount of dough. Give me two seconds and I'll show you what we've accomplished so far. Because the next thing we have to do is practice a little patience. Get that out of there. And, and in, when anytime you're mixing, whether it be with a stand mixer or a hand mixer, um, you want to make sure you scrape your bowl. You know, uh, usually at least in between every step. Yes, you know, so when you add something, mix it, scrape. Add something, mix it, scrape. And what you're doing is ensuring that it's getting all mixed up all the way around. So we're gonna get that off. We're gonna take this, move it around. Now this is a dense batter. I also remember reading, much like the cream cheese cookies we made last week, that uh, the batter's sticky. I can already tell you just from feeling the spatula, because I, I haven't actually tried it yet. Um, it, it's, it feels sticky also, yeah, see it? But it's dense. I'll give it that. All right, so all we have left to do is, like I said, we're gonna have to practice a little patience. This dough is a great make ahead of time dough. Um, let's say you know that you got something coming up on a Saturday or you wanna make these cookies with somebody or whatever, you're making them for a party. You can make this dough up to two days in advance. Um, hold on for me one second. Okay, sorry about that. I had to go get the uh, plastic wrap. So we're gonna, much like the cream cheese cookies, we're gonna put this dough in the fridge for a little while. Now, when I say this is a make ahead, at this point now you can decide to yourself, when do I want these cookies? Minimum time in the fridge is two hours, right? So I'm gonna put these in the fridge for two hours, but they can sit in your refrigerator covered for up to two days um, before it has to be, this dough has to be used. So you can make these up two days in advance. Let's say you're having a baking party, you know, for cookies for Christmas, um, or you're doing a cookie exchange. That seems to be very popular, especially with my family. Um, 
this is something you could make up real quick because I didn't take long. I spent more time talking than anything else. You can make these up a couple days ahead of time and then that way all you gotta do is bake them off while you're baking all your other cookies. That's kind of a rare bird. Most cookies you have to make relatively, I mean though, dough will sit a little while as long as it's wrapped, but not two days. Um, so anyhow, I'm gonna put these in the fridge for a couple hours and when I come back, we can move on to actually forming the cookies and getting them in the oven. All right, I'll be back in just one second. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. We let our butter sit in the fridge, minimum two hours. I've never seen a cookie recipe that says minimum two hours to two days. Um, but we're firm now and it's actually not sticky anymore. So the next step on this is to just go ahead and make our dough balls. Now, I'm gonna use cookie scoop. You can also just use uh, two, ta two spoons, uh, one tablespoon-ish worth of dough and use the other spoon to scrape it off onto here for they're kind of like drop they're they're drops they're not true we're not going to sit here and roll them up so all we're going to do is scoop them out put them on the pan all right or on our cookie sheet and we want them to be about two inches apart is what we're looking for you know and we want them to be you know it, the important thing is we make our our cookies um way the same you know, they, you know, at least close, you know, within a gram or two. Um, I should weigh these in all reality. Now, according to the recipe, this uh, recipe makes a technical amount of a quarter crap ton. Um, it, uh, it makes 60, um, is what the recipe says. So, you could be eating these for a while, but if they taste good, I mean, because I don't know how they taste, I, you might, you maybe you've had these before if you have, let me know. Um, it, you could uh, send these out as gifts, you know, uh, hands down. But like I said, one tablespoon uh, in a ball, just like that, and about an inch and a half, two inches apart on your cookie sheet. I don't believe, looking at the picture of them, that they really spread so much, but they do puff up a little. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get these on the cookie sheets real quick and when I come back we will uh, talk about how long to bake them for. Okay so one thing I did forget to mention real quick before I finish doing these, now is when you want to preheat your oven, uh, 350 degrees. So go ahead and get that started, I got mine just started and now I'm going to finish putting these together. Alright, see you in a second. Alright so. I ended up with 60 cookies, I think, 24, no, I actually ended up with more than that. I got three sheets of 24, so that'd be what, 72, right? Uh, 48, 52, 62. So I got 62 cookies. That's good, that's good, that's close to 60. Um, and and that, that works. So I've got my oven at 350 degrees. I've got 24 cookies a sheet. I'm gonna put them in the oven, middle rack. And I'm gonna bake these for 12 to 14 minutes, like the recipe says. So I'll set my timer for 12 and check them, see where we're at. Now, it says that the, <laughs> the only thing it says to look for is they should be golden brown on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is, since I have three cookie sheets worth, is I'll do 12 minutes. I'll pull these, because once I take them out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let them cool on the sheet yeah, I'll set the sheet down on a cookie rack. I'll let them cool for about three or four minutes, and then I'll take them off of the sheet and let them cool completely on a rack. But what I'll do with this first batch here is I'll bake them for 12 minutes, and then I'll check the bottom and see if it's golden brown. I mean, we'll kind of have an I would imagine I'll have some kind of idea when they come out. But then when I come back, I'll have them cooled, and we can take a look at one and see what we're looking for and what I found. All right, so when I come back, we'll uh, check these cookies, make some icing, and uh, drizzle them, and eat one. All right, I'll see you here in a second. Okay, so we have let our cookies cool, and I'll show you what, remember we were just talking about <clears throat> 12 to 14 minutes, 12, 13, 14, that, and how I wanted to kind of see where we were headed at. I'll show you what, it, what I was talking about to some extent. Let me find one of the real. 
Okay, so I, I have written down my book 14. Right there is 12. See how it's not really golden brown at all? 13 is lightly golden brown, but 14 has a nice golden brown look. So now I know with these cookies, I'm going to probably run right around 14 minutes. Uh, now, they I'm sure they all taste the same. They all feel the same. Yeah, see how they're spongy on the top? Yeah, and, and on the sides too. I mean, they're, you know, just, they're cake, very cake-like, um, which I think is awesome. So, let me, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with the, we just gotta make the icing, put some sprinkles on them, right? So in this bowl, I have 420 grams of uh, powdered sugar, which is uh, three, three and a half cups, 420 grams of powdered sugar. To this, I'm going to add one teaspoon, four grams of vanilla. <clears throat> Two tablespoons, uh, 30 milliliters of lemon juice, and then I'm going to start with. You're looking at four to six uh, tablespoons of whole milk. I've got four tablespoons in here. It's what I'm going to start with because we don't want this really, really thin. Um, you know, some icings you want it to be really thin, and yeah, you know, so it just kind of really pours out of your bowl this we want it to be kind of thick you know pourable but just barely pourable so I'm gonna start with four and then I'm gonna um, if need be I'll add another tablespoon okay so we got that all mixed up and I want to show you now I, that was only four tablespoons of milk but see how that's pourable but it's still pretty thick um, a lot thicker than like what we put on the snickerdoodle bun cake um, and that's okay that's what we want right there according to uh, the uh, recipe that we're using so what we'll do now I've got our cookies are sitting on a cooling rack sitting on a cooling rack sitting on a cookie sheet um, with a part piece of parchment paper under it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our icing and we're gonna go ahead and just drizzle this, and spoon it onto on top of these. That way they'll run down. But we got the parchment paper under there, so that way we can easily clean up our mess. Okay, we've got them iced, and I went ahead and threw some sprinkles on them also, just to give them a bit of character or so. But there we are. Mind the mess below them. That is our cookie in all its fame and glory and that right there there we are no nope, maybe we need it to focus but there is our cookie now so even if we did a lemon icing with these you could make this any flavor you'd like you know um if you like strawberry, you could, uh, any, any extract you can think of, you can put in that icing instead of the lemon. Um, if you back off the lemon juice, you could <clears throat> just simply add a little more milk to it to make up the difference in the liquid. Um, and then you could add, um, you know, like I said, any extract you feel that you want to have in that. You don't even have to do a glaze on these. You could do, um... A chocolate um, like a ganache and drizzle that on top or do like we did here and coat them you could dip them in chocolate um, for that matter or even a white chocolate or you know you could use uh, you can make almost any, any color for dippable candy boom right there um, to put it in these much like the cheesecake cookies we did last week are a very versatile uh, cookie but I'm gonna try one all the same oh. hmm that's really good hmm it almost tastes 
very similar to a vanilla cake because <clears throat> it is a cake like you know go to right there uh -oh. sorry everything on my camera is backwards but right there yeah so it's very cake like and much like the cream cheese ones um but a totally different flavor slightly different texture um but still just as moist and just as delicious these are good Now, when it comes to storing these, much like the cream cheese ones, you want to keep them out in the fridge or keep them in the fridge and bring them up to room temperature. But for the volume that these make, you could I could take these, divide this into three different things, put them into tins or little cookie boxes and give these out as gifts to friends. You know, and I guarantee they're going to be like, oh, thanks, man. These are amazing. So, um, give these a try. I mean, hands down. They're a very versatile cookie. You can do a lot with them, on, especially when it comes to decorating them. They're easy. You and your, your kids, your nephews, your nieces. If you're learning to make cookies on, you know, and you're still at those first few, first few stages of learning how to make cookies, this is a good one. It's easy. Very few ingredients, um, and pretty much foolproof. So uh, let me know if you do. Let me know if you give these a try. Just leave me a comment down below. Find us on Facebook, either way it goes. Uh, yeah, I'd be curious if there's something you do differently. That would be even better to hear about. Uh, so next week, no clue. Not a clue in the world. Uh, don't know what's going to be for dinner. Don't know what's going to be for dessert. But... I'll have it figured out by the time we meet up again next week and I, I guarantee it's going to be something just amazing and good and delicious and filling and will warm your heart all the same. So until next week, I love you. I love you very much and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Tell somebody else that you love them and you love them very much. It's going to make their day a whole lot better. They may need to hear it and it's going to make you feel better to tell them. It's going to make you feel good inside. I know it does me. And uh, you bake them some of these cookies and and share they're going to know that you care they're going to taste it in every bite and it'll give you something to talk about start a conversation yeah and, and people need conversation so until next week for dinner i love you i'll see you then talk to you later all right bye-bye